Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Saved by Grace, where we're here to do testimonies of how the Lord truly used His grace and mercy to save us. With me today, the amazingly talented Aretha Harden. Thank you for joining us. Hi. We've been having some technical <laughs> issues, but that's not going to stop the interview. We are used to this. The reason I'm having this amazing woman on the show, her voice, was well, a godsend, and you are truly gifted. Uh, I'm going to do shout outs to your CD throughout the show. God's permission. Now, where can people pick this up? Because they're going to get to hear a little bit of it. The teasing with it. But where can people pick this up currently? Um, iTunes. They can go to uh, CD Baby. They can go to Amazon uh, Rhapsody. And I would say it's two albums out there that's the same, but one is the first recording, and that's um, God's permission. This one is God's permission reloaded, and it has a couple of more songs on it, and it's been redone. All the music is live and revocals. And I know this one, it's fantastic. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> what is it? Memorial Day is coming up? Get some Memorial Day gifts. But again, you know, music <laughs> tends to kind of soothe the soul, and when you're singing with the spirit, it mm -hmm. just takes it to a whole other level. So let's talk about when you started. When did you start singing? Professionally, about 19. Oh. Um, I, I could sing about two or three. And um, my first time actually singing um, with a choir, I was maybe about eight or nine. And um, there was a song by uh, James Cleveland. And uh, nobody wanted to lead the song. So I stood up and I led the song. And that was the beginning. And we've mentioned this before. You, you kind of, you, you've loved music. You knew yes, that was kind of your calling. Mm -hmm. um, who else saw that gift? Or who was the first one to see that gift and goes, Something's, something's different here. Something's different. Um, my brother, Eric, um, he was the first one that noticed it. I was in the back of his car. He was, I was 14. And uh, Whitney Houston, Saving All My Love For You, was in the back background. And I was singing it. And um, he stopped it. And he, he, um, he rewinded it. He said, sing that again. And I sang it all the way through. And he was like, oh, OK. He said, we got to do something like this. Mm. It took maybe about, about four years. But in that that would say that I was 19 at that time. And when um, that first album came out, uh, Faith for Always, Always Truth and Honesty. And that lasted for about nine years. Mm -hmm. And I did House of Blues for a year off of that, off of that album. Wow. And um, with, but with this album, I did House of Blues for three years. So I had a con I was contracted with them for three years. And now that's over because God is moving forward on some other things. Mm -hmm. oh, well, we already know he's taking you to a whole <laughs> other place. I mean, the interesting thing is this, you know, I, I, we all learn at a different pace. And, and when you start to see a God-given talent and when you sing how it touches people's lives, if you had people come out up to you throughout your life, especially from the start when you actually you knew you were singing, but more so now as an adult, does it still surprise you when a person comes up and goes, you know, you've touched me, you've changed my life from, from music. How does that make you feel? How do you it, heard that? It just makes it, um, it just gives me, uh, it's, it's evidence that that God was, was, was in the building and he was in me, that he used me as that vessel. And it's always good to hear the testimony of, uh, of people. Um, the Stella Awards, um, a woman came up to me and I believe she belonged to the church, I can't remember her name, I'm sorry. But she walked up to me and she said, I've been healed. When you started singing God's permission, my body literally stopped hurting, and I haven't hurt the whole entire time I've been here. So I gave her a CD, and I said, you know what? You go home, and you be healed. You be total. I said, well, I speak total healing over your body. And there were certain certain um, things that, that happened at, at the shows where people were um, probably getting ready to commit suicide. There were two people that came, to me, came up to me at at that time, and um, they said that they were gonna enjoy the show and go home and commit suicide, but they they said that they couldn't do it after that, and they bought the album, and I said, you'd be blessed, and it was people from all over the world at mm -hmm. the House of Blues, and they come, because it's not really local, it's people that's from everywhere, from from Australia to Africa to to Spain to, you, you name it, they're, they're from everywhere. And to be able to uh, touch lives like that and for them to um, say, per se, they're not saved, but you interest, you, you kind of pique their spirit to mm. kind of see what this God thing is all about. Yeah. Talk about sowing a seed. I mean, it's an amazing thing is that 
you know, some people don't understand the whole thing of spiritual. Yes. Thing. Now, we didn't plan that song, which is funny that God's permission <laughs> is the song, because that's actually the song we're going to play today. That was on my heart. I'm like, Lord, what's the song we're going to play? And I mean, that's the thing. It's, you know, it's exciting because you want people to experience mm -hmm. that freedom, you know, with, with God's spirit, how it truly kind of, it sets you free in this healing that can come from it, even from song. I think people have been taught so much misinformation that when yeah. you start hearing and you look at yourself and the gifts that you've been given, because we've all been given gifts. Right. And when we actually start to use them to glorify God, life will change. I know with me, you're smarter than me. I'm a little more stubborn. And so throughout my life, I was using the gifts, uh, because I was an atheist, to glorify myself. Now, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for his patience and mercy because finally I was shown, oh, I'm this is a gift from you, right. and I need to use it to glorify you and stop glorifying myself. Yes. And you know what's amazing is things change. Mm -hmm. you start realizing that you are sowing seeds and you're just doing it to glorify God. Like, yes. It's not about me. Yeah. You're simply a vessel that's being used. Now with that gift in regards to refinement of your voice, uh, you have kind of briefly spoke about that you had gone to teachers. What did they tell you? They told me that they would not train me. They said that that can't be taught. What you have is a God gift. And if they touched it, it would ruin it. So it would take the purity out of it. So they said, you can probably work on your breathing techniques, but that's about all you need. You don't need training. No. So. Yeah, you kind of can't teach a gift. We didn't really earn it. We're just, we're giving it. Yeah. <laughs> is there a show, because you've done, a, you've done a, a lot of stuff, is there a show that truly stands out in your mind? I'm sure that every show is special or an event that really touched your heart um, more so than some of the others. Uh, yeah. Um, it was actually my last show at the House of Blues. Okay. And there was someone from Australia, and he was taping live. Mm. And the next thing I know, I, I see it on YouTube. Mm. And, and he, was from, he, was, he was from some TV show in Australia, and they hit, had like four million hits on every time they, they, they view it. But he particularly, he, he, he um, featured me um, that day. I, he never spoke to me, no. but when I saw it, he said, why isn't she a household name? She should be a household name. Mm -hmm. And um, he was saying the power from her, from her voice. And, and it's like, to them, it's a show. But for me, it's ministry. Yeah. It was like, what can I give them, God, that will change their life, that would give them a, a new vision, a new dream, a new, you know, a new walk? Um, and every show, every show was a blessing. It was always great um, to, to do those shows, but it was even greater to hear the testimony. Yeah. And, and it's, it truly is amazing. I mean, I've been, I've been blessed to actually hear you sing uh, live, record, and it doesn't matter. It just always, it just always touches the person. Yeah. It just, you, you feel that spiritually, like, wow. And it's interesting when people say, because like, you're going to be making all this money. Mm -hmm. And you understand, you're like, that's not my calling. I'm right. here to give it. It was given to me for free. I'm going to mm -hmm. give it freely. And then you truly understand that God has a much bigger mm -hmm. plan. It's also on his timing. And just with the people that you've reached so far, mm -hmm. it's going to be so much more exponential than that, whether you realize mm -hmm. it or not. I think you do. But it's it, it's amazing to see, you know, just you, you might talk to 500 and you reach one. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, now you're going to reach five million. Now you're going to reach 100 million. And people, mm -hmm. we can't conceptualize God's plan. We have yes. like, you know, our imagination, I believe, limits us. Yeah. Because we're like, all right, I'm going to do this. And he goes, no. You're going to do this. Right. Like, I'm, I'm going to sing to, you know, a sold out concert. He goes, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. You're going to sing all over the world. The right. sold out venues continuously. And you're right. like, oh, okay, that's a whole different thing than mm -hmm. I had. Now, you're a woman of faith. Yeah. When would you say throughout your life, your, I mean, obviously, it's an ongoing walk, that your faith was truly strengthened? Because you had a lot of stuff. We've obviously done testimony before. Um, well, I, I would say there, there's two events. One was the my divorce. And... That was the, the beginning of this album. Okay. And uh, that's how God's Permission came. God's Permission was the first song mm -hmm. that I wrote. And uh, um, how that came about was I was married to a pastor for 17 years. And it just was, it was a chore. <laughs> that's all I yeah. can say. It was a chore. And I said, God, if it's for me to be married to this man, fix it. If it's not, then have him serve me with divorce papers. The very next day, he served me with divorce papers. Well, that's clear enough. For yeah, me. <laughs> it doesn't get much clearer than that. All right. Yeah. So um, I, I actually 
um, went in to record a song called I Love You, Lord. Mm. And that's, uh, it, actually, it's, it's on this album twice. It's in a reprise, and it's regular okay. um, recorded. But that particular day when he did it, um, he would always attack me on the days I was going in to, to the studio. Yeah. And it was always on Monday. And so I got to the point that I was like, okay, I'm used to this. This is what he's going to do. He's not going to watch the kids. I just take all of them with me. Mm -hmm. And the house was big enough that they would be somewhere and wouldn't make any noise and, and do what I need to do. But this particular day I went in and I said, okay, all I want is strings. And, they, and I told them what happened. They said, no, I think you need to go home. I said, no, if I can sing through this, I could do anything. And I went in and I was just warming up. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, my um, one of the producers, uh, JL, he was um, on the on the keys, and I said, "Just give me strings." And I started praying, and before I knew it, I was in tune. And then I started singing the song, "I love you, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. I love you, Lord." <laughs> 